It's TK Friday. Today it's color grading with selections. I have a practice image for you to download that you can follow along with me. You're going to learn a lot. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, it'll soon be Christmas. So I want to wish each and every one of you out there a very Merry Christmas. Today, we'll be working on this image. Now, I was looking for an image to work on today, and I picked this image because it has a lot of different issues with it. It's a really cool image. Like, I like this light triangle above her head here and the shadows and things there. It kind of gives me a feel of an old movie, and I thought it would be a lot of fun to work on today. Now, I do have a plan of attack today which I'll go over before we start. And by the way, if you don't yet have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, or if you want to get some training videos, I'll give you a link to Tony Kuiper's web store in the description below this video. You can save 15% off of anything on Tony's web store, and that includes the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And when you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and you're getting some really great products to help you in your Photoshop workflow. And I want to thank you for that because it helps me to keep these YouTube tutorials coming your way. Also, if you enjoyed the tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe, and leave comments and questions. I really love to hear from you, and I think it helps everybody. And if you subscribe, click that bell notification icon. That way, you'll be reminded every time I put out a new tutorial. And now, on to the plan of attack. Let's see where we're going to go. But we're going to start out with this image, and we're going to turn it into this image by doing all these different adjustments, as you can see right here. Looks like a lot, but it's really not that much, to be honest with you with you so again it starts out like this and ends up like this now to get there what we're going to do is i'm going to start out by making these pants a little bit darker and a little bit more blue and we'll change maybe the tint a little bit on them and secondly what we'll do is we're going to work on this white shirt and change it to like a a light pink color to offset this uh, white milk bottle i think it's going to be quite lovely when we do that Next, we're going to work on this babushka on the head here. This is all done with selections and things. We're going to lighten it up and make it a little bit more on the red side. And after that, these arms are a little bit too light, and they draw the eye to the arms instead of the face. So we're going to darken the arms and this leg up just a little wee bit. And then next, we're going to lighten up the face and add a little bit of warmth to that face to give it a nice, inviting, warm look. Okay, and then after that, this area right here is really light and it really draws the eye and it takes your attention off of our model here. So we want our eyes to be drawn to this model. So we need to darken this up so we can make the eyes look this way. Okay, after that, what we're going to do is these arm, this arm cha- armrest here in this chair is a little light and these areas over here are too light. So we're going to darken those down after that. We're going to work on this paper over here. I'm just going to enrich these shadows, darken up these shadows, give it more of a mysterious look. And then we're going to darken the overall background to keep the subject pushed forward. So we really want our emphasis on the subject. And that's how I'm building up this image here. All right. And then after that, I want to uh, do a little bit of color grading on the highlights, just to warm the overall highlights and make this image a little more inviting. And then after that, there's a bit of a color cast in the shadows, a green cast. We're going to take care of that. So we're going to work on shadows and remove that green color cast. Stay with me through this whole video because you will learn a lot. The first thing I want to do is select these pants. And the easiest way to do it is come to our color masking icon and click on that. We're going to select the blue of these pants, just that easy. And look, those pants are selected. Now we can lighten that selection up a little bit like that. And the other thing I want to do is make this even lighter. So I'm going to go to the levels here and I'll just take this level and drag it to the left, the midtones to the left a little bit, just to encompass more areas of the pants. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this black brush. And what I'm going to do is simply uh, paint off these other areas that I do not want affected, like her shirt area right in here some areas in here, the shoe right here, just like that. We've made a selection. We've made a selection using a color mask. Pretty cool, right? Let's output that to a color grade tool. 
And uh, when we do that, I'm going to work on the midtone. So I'll click on the midtone block and I'm going to drag this. Remember, I want to change the pants a little differently in tint. I'm going to change that tint a little bit like that. And I just want to darken those pants down just a little wee bit. And you notice how it only attacks those pants. So here's the before. And here's the after. That was pretty simple, right? On to the next step. Next, I want to lighten up this babushka and make it a little more red. So let's get out of this color grading tool. Let's get the uh, color range mask again. And let's click on some of the red in here and click OK. And you can see it selects that really well. Now let's refine it a little bit. You have these circles here, so we can narrow that range of the red there by pulling these in a little bit. And you see how I'm knocking out other areas of the image? Right like that, and I'm getting a really nice selection. Let's see, I can lighten that up even by moving this like so, just to lighten it up. And I'm just mainly looking at the babushka, and I think right there is good. And now what I'll do is grab the brush, and what I want to do is make my brush a little smaller. And I grabbed the black brush, by the way, and I'm just going to paint out this area in here really easily, just like this, where we just leave the babushka in there. This is a real quick and easy way of making a selection. I could use, I could use the object selection tool to do this, and I've experimented with it, but I think this is the easiest, and it gives me a lot of nice feathering in here. I can zoom in just a little bit and get rid of some of this stuff in here. Paint right like that. That's good. And I can come in here just a little bit, just like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. I only want this babushka selected, right? So all these other areas I do not want selected. And notice one thing. See right here this layer called TK Paint? Whenever I uh, switch to a black paintbrush, it selected this layer TK Paint. And the reason I'm pointing that out is uh, I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to grab my lasso tool. It's the L. And what I want to do is just lasso out all these areas that I don't want so I can take them all out in one fell swoop, just like that, okay? So they're selected. And the reason I'm pointing this TK paint out is because if you wanna use this fill dialog here to fill that in with black paint, you have to have this TK paint layer selected or the fill dialog won't come up. So I'm gonna click this right here. I'm gonna fill this with black, click OK. And now I'll deselect by clicking this icon right here. And look, I selected the babushka, isn't that cool? All I need to do is output it to a color grading layer. And let's go with the midtones. Let's make that babushka more red, just like so, really red. And we'll lighten it up just a wee little bit. Okay, maybe a lot actually. Okay, because it's feathered really well. So let's see, here's the before and here's the after. So it's a lot more red and it's lightened up. The next thing I wanna do is select this shirt and change it to pink. So to do that, I'm gonna use the object selection tool, but I'm going to use it in the lasso mode. There's two modes, lasso and rectangle. Lasso is the mode I'm gonna use here. So all I'm gonna do is come around this arm here, draw around here and use the artificial intelligence around the hair here, just like so, and it's gonna select that. Now I'm gonna hold the shift key down and add to that selection. So now I'm gonna come down here miss this thumb around the milk bottle, come around the shirt or the blouse, whatever you want to call it, up in here, right around this arm. And it selects that. Pretty cool, right? It missed the thumb right there. And uh, we can fix that easily later, and I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to hold the shift key down one more time and drag a selection around this area of the blouse. And it's missed right here. And I find if it misses an area like this, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to the quick selection tool and just, uh, let's make my brush a little bit larger and just come and grab this like so. I'm not even going to refine it with select and mask. I'm going to go right to the color grading tool. Now, this is important. Whenever you have a selection, it's different than when you output a color grading tool from a luminosity mask, okay? When you have a selection, you've got to press this plus to engage this color grading tool into a layer. And if we uh, click this uh, double arrow here, we can see our selection right there, right? Okay. And let's go ahead and I'm going to work with highlights and midtones. I'll start out with highlights. All I want to do is go into these magenta colors. See, I'm putting some pink highlights in there. And I might just darken that up just a wee little bit, just like that. And now let's go to midtones, and I'm going to 
drag some magenta from the midtones and see how I just gave it a nice light pink in there. Now I can lighten it or darken it. I may just slightly darken it just so you can see it. Now you can always go back and readjust any of these adjustment layers. This is all non-destructive editing, by the way, but see how nice the milk looks against the pink shirt there. And that's it. Now we can zoom in and take a look and see if we've missed any areas in here. Okay. And as I look here, it looks pretty good. There's a little area right here and here, and I'll show you how I fix that. All we need to do is let's X out of the color grading tool and see this icon right here. This lets you edit your layer mask. So click on that. And when you do, you have all these tools to work with. You have paint brushes, dodge and burn. You can expand and contract. You can do all kinds of things. You can add some blur, whatever you need to do. But what I want to do is click this right here and you can see the actual mask itself. Okay. So I could come here and like this area here, it's not affecting anything, but I can grab a black brush and make my brush a little smaller and just simply paint that away. It missed a little area here, right? So I can grab a white brush or a dodge tool, whatever I want, but a white brush will get it real quick. And this area up here is black. So let me grab a black brush and fix that up here. Now I'm going to turn this back on. And I'm going to still use a white brush and paint this in right here, okay? I don't need to see the mask. I actually want to see what I missed. So I'm going to grab a white brush and just simply paint that area that I missed right there. Just that easy. And then I'm going to get these areas over here. I'm going to make that brush a lower opacity, like 30%. And I'm going to make sure my brush is feathered really well. And I'm just going to paint right over this little area right here. All I have to do is make it look believable. I know I'm painting over the hair, but it's not hurting anything. This little area right here, 30% of paint, and I'll just hit in there just a little bit. Maybe up in there, just a tiny wee bit. This area right in here, we'll just touch that up. Now, if I overdo it, I can go to black paint and simply make that brush a little smaller. And But you get the idea, right? Just take your time and get it right. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go back with white paint and just paint in here a little bit more and a little bit more right here. You can also hit your X key to change between the two different brush colors, by the way. And I think that's good. Yeah. And if I miss an area, I'm sure somebody's going to point it out in the video. I'm going to get a white brush and just paint right in here and right there. But good enough. All it has to do is look believable. And to me, it looks believable. But take as much time as you need to get it right. When I was editing the video, I see I painted on the hair right here a little bit. And I'm still in layer mask mode, so I can go and grab my black brush and just simply paint that off, just like that. Okay? But it's just that easy. And there, I painted on the hair here a little bit too, so let me get that off. And even this hair right here. Okay, but you get the idea. It's actually painted on the hair right here. These other little flyaway hairs, I don't think it really means all that much. But take your time and get it right. I think, I think we're good. Other than that, and I can add, let's go to a white brush. I'll just type my X key, and I'm at 100% there. Jeez, I'm going to go down to like 20% and just paint a little bit of pink right here and here just to fill that in. Okay. And I'm going to go to X, go to my black brush, and just paint some of this off in this hair right here and right here. But again, take your time. I know people out there will say, boy, you missed that. But remember, I'm doing a tutorial. If I wasn't doing a tutorial, I would spend a little bit more time. But believe me, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It just needs to look believable, and I believe it does. By the way, I want to point out, whenever you see this adjust layer mask here, that means you're in that layer mask mode and you have all these tools available, okay? And I did forget to get that little bit of paint off that thumb. I went back and just grabbed a black brush and painted that off. But in reality, it wouldn't have made any difference either way. Next thing I want to do is darken off this arm here and this arm and this, and this hand right here. I'll be using the object selection tool in the lasso mode. I'm going to go ahead and X out of here and shut this properties panel down. I'll grab the object selection tool and I am in the lasso mode. And I'm just making my selections around the arm and the hand and letting the artificial intelligence do its job. And just like that, it's that easy. This time, I'm going to come up to my channels and select the active selection. I'm going to use a mass calculation. Click on the mass calculator. I'm going to intersect it. 
Let's X out of here. I'm going to intersect it with a luminosity mask. I'm just going to use the lights one and click equals. And just like that, it has selected my selection. Now I'm going to output that to a color grading tool, click the midtones block, and then we'll just darken the arms and hands down a little bit. And I'm darkening it through a lights one. So it's going to protect the shadow areas. And I think maybe right around there. Here is the before and here's the after. Now I'll select the leg with the object selection tool in the lasso mode. I'm going to do the same thing, X out of here, come to my channels and active selection. I'm going to get a mask calculator, intersect it with the lights one mask again, click equals. Let's output that to a color grade tool, midtones. Let's just slightly darken up. See how fast this can be? Just slightly darken it up just a little bit. And that's it. Here is the before and here's the after. Next, I want to lighten the face, same object selection tool in lasso mode. Just come around the face like so, just like that. And it selects the face. This time I'm working with the selection, so come and click the plus. And let's go to midtones again, and let's slightly lighten up the face, just like that. And let's warm it up a little bit as well. Just add a little bit of that warmth to it now here is the before and here's the after now let's go ahead and zoom into that face and see what our selection looks like so here's the before and here's the after if you don't want it on the lips all you need to do is go into the layer mask mode and then you can just get yourself a black brush and just uh, paint it off the lips just like that okay and then if you click these double arrows, you can see there it is right there. Okay. Just that easy. Okay. And let's go again. And there we go. So here is the before and here's the after, but it gives it a nice warm glow and it looks really inviting. Now check this out. I'll shut off the last two adjustments with the foot and the hands and the arms. See how they compete with the face, but now that they're darkened up a little bit and that foot it lets you look right at that face. And that's very important when you're crafting images. you got to think in these terms. The next thing I'm going to do is get the object selection tool and select this area right here because I want to darken it down because it's drawing attention away from the model. And uh, if I get stubborn areas, I use the quick selection tool and just fix it just that easily. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to keep selecting these other areas I want to darken down because originally on the first go, I did this in two separate layers. I'm going to try it all with one layer to see if I can save some time. Now, I don't need to intersect this with anything, and I tried intersecting it with a lights one, but it didn't really help, so I'm just going to do a straightforward adjustment without an intersection. So let's X out of the adjust layer mask mode here, and let's click on the color grading tool. And remember, you must, when you're using a selection, you must press the plus or click on the plus here to add that, okay? So now all we need to do is click on the mid-tone block and let's start to darken that down. Yeah, see, I can do that all in one fell swoop. Just darken that all down at one shot. And I think right around there. And remember, all of these adjustments are non-destructive, so if you need to go back and tweak any, you can. But here's the before. See how the light takes your eyes away from the model but now you're going towards the model that's very important we're getting near the end the next thing on the list is this uh paper and this doily here i want to darken the shadows object selection tool in the lasso mode just come around here and select this really nice with that artificial intelligence gets it nice let's x out of the color grading tool because i'm going to intersect this with shadow so let's come to my channels active selection Mass calculator, click on intersect, X out of here, go to the luminosity mass, and we're just going to go to shadows one. It's going to select the shadows really nice, the light areas of the shadows. Click equal, and now that the shadows in the paper are intersected, I'll put that to a color grading tool. Click on midtones. Shadows doesn't really affect it because these are more midtones here, so I'm going to take this slider and drag it the whole way to the left. And darkens the shadows right up. Check this out. I'll zoom in so you can really see it in there. But here's the before. And here's the after. But it really makes a nice effect there. Now, I can go here and click this icon and go back to full screen. And so far, let's see where we've come so far. Here's where we started. 
And here's where we're at so far. So I'm really loving the results. We're almost done. So hang in there. Stick with me. The next thing I want to do is darken the overall shadows down so we can select subject. Follow me closely. It missed a part of the subject. I'll use the object selection tool to select it. It's going to be a little stubborn here, as you'll see. It missed a little area in the thumb, and it missed these fingers. I'm just holding the shift key down and grabbing these. And now I need to invert that subject to get the background, okay? So now my background selected. Let's get out of the color grading tool. Let's go into my channel, select the active selection. We're going to use the mass calculator intersect. Let's get out of here by clicking the X. Go to luminosity mask. I'm going to try darks one. Now darks two. I think darks two is the one I want equals. And now I've made my selection. Output it to a color grading tool. Click on the midtones and let's just darken up the shadows a little bit just like that. Here's the before and here's the after. Now just a little color grading and we'll be done. Let's X out of here. All I want to do is go to luminosity masks. I'm just using lights one. And what I want to do here is I'll put this to a color grading tool. And what I want to do is just warm up the midtones just a little wee bit. And I have a light mask to help me. See, I'm just going to warm up those midtones a little bit, just like that. Do I want to lighten them up a little? I don't know. Maybe just a slight amount. Here is the before, and here's the after. See, it just adds a nice, warm, inviting tone. And the last thing I want to do, there's a little green color cast here. So let's X out of here. Let's go back to the luminosity mask. Click on here. And now I want to work with shadow tones. Let's try darks one. Not not right. Let's darks two. Yeah, that protects the highlights better. So I'm going to go with darks two. I'll put that to a color grading tool. And the opposite of green is magenta. So let's go on the midtones and I'm just going to pull this slightly into magenta. And you see how that just removes that color cast. So here's the before. I hope you can see that. And here is the after. And that's it. So we started out looking like this. So just study it here. And notice how your eyes will be drawn to the model now with all the corrections we've done. Isn't that cool? Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you came along for the whole ride. If you did, you learned a lot. Don't forget to download that image. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Um, don't forget to download this image so you can follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. I want to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas this year. Have a safe, happy and healthy holiday. I'll see you all right here next time on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. But until then, happy editing.